Life's too short to drive boring cars. So in today's day and age, it's more and more difficult to get a deal. And as a result, we wanna make sure that we can stretch our dollars further than we've ever had to do before. Now clearly luxury cars are great to have, but they're just that, they're luxury. What about everyday vehicles? Even those are getting to be very difficult to find and even more importantly, they're becoming more expensive. So because they're getting pricey, we always wanna make sure we're getting the best value and we wanna make sure that we have a vehicle that lasts forever or at least until we get bored to tears of it. So guess what, I can't help. I'm gonna share with you guys a list of five amazing vehicles and they're not luxury cars, they're everyday vehicles that you and I can afford that they're likely gonna last forever. Let's get into it now. All right, so number one on our list is the tried and true Toyota product. You can't go wrong. You know if you're driving a Toyota, it's gonna last forever, but specifically the Toyota Highlander and we have considered the hybrid because we have the blue on the T and that's how that gives that away. So let's do a quick walk around first. I wanna point out typical Highlander, of course, all the bits and pieces would be a little detuned from what you'd expect in the Lexus brand. Doesn't mean it's any less of a car, it just means it's slightly less luxury oriented. Look at these beautiful headlights, fairly simplistic, easy to change, not big bucks should you need to replace one, say for example an impact with a stone, great stuff. And then you look along here, you have this great plastic shrouding. Always a great idea in any SUV where you might take your vehicle more off-road or see inclement weather. And then we look down here, we have these beautiful wheels. Now just because you're driving a Toyota doesn't mean you have to settle for low budget. You still get aluminum wheels, looks great. And then here, mud guards to keep the junk off the bottom of the panels here. This one here, as you see, is all wheel drive. And of course, it's a hybrid as already mentioned. Beautiful detailing on these mirrors. Of course, I love this style here, this accent of light. You have keyless entry here on the front, as well as on the back, it's more simplistic and more protection here along the rear corner. And you'll notice more plastic so it protects the backside from getting the stones kicking up. Now look around here. Personally, I love this rear tail finish. It's a little strong, staunch, a little square, but it definitely looks great. It's very techy looking. And again, it should be, it's a hybrid vehicle. Look along here. This beautiful chrome or brushed aluminum piece was reserved for cars like Mercedes and BMWs only a few short years ago. Now Toyota's doing things like that. Here we have an LE version of trim. Again, love that blue look. That clearly is the hybrid. And then if you look over here, this great little overhang, love this. Beefy, and of course it still looks very sporty from the backside here. You don't feel like you're buying a minivan. Like there are a lot of SUVs today that feel very minivan-ish, if you will. This isn't necessarily one of them. It's tried, true, ultra reliable, and accommodates a lot of space for the family and friends. But looking along here, you'll notice has this beautiful trim, chrome all the way accenting the lines, all the way down along the base of the windows. The only unfortunate part, looking up top, there's no sunroof, and that wouldn't be a shocker because it's not technically a luxury vehicle. But what powers this beautiful little unit? Well, we actually have a two and a half liter four cylinder engine, totally tried and true by Toyota. Makes about 180 horsepower, give or take but there's actually electric motors and drivetrain complementing this whole vehicle, adding another 54 horsepower, giving it up and around close to 240 horsepower in total. Great vehicle, lots of performance, enough to certainly get you scooting around, and you do it in a very frugal manner, as well as minimal repairs along the way. This vehicle is guaranteed to run a long, long time. And another point worth mentioning is the well-wearing interior. Nothing fancy. We've got cloth seats, but we have all the latest technology by Toyota. All the buttons are large, they're very well engaging, and they wear very well. So you're gonna expect everything on the inside to wear as it should, and not wear out prematurely like you're finding in a lot of substandard vehicles on the market today. And one more thing I might point out, I just love the way this is starting to look. The front design of these modern day Toyotas look sharp. This high gloss, beautiful look, very clean looking here as well. And again, more well wearing parts. So if you hit a bumper, maybe some concrete pad up at the sidewalk as you're parking, in the, parking your vehicle, you're not gonna worry as much about scuffing this up. It's not a high gloss or carbon fiber. This is gonna wear very well essentially resulting in a vehicle that even if you did damage body parts, it's not gonna cost you a ton of money to replace it. That's what some of the nemesis is regarding some of the high-end luxury cars. 
when they get older and they start wearing out, the depreciation kills a lot of the old school luxury cars. So when even as something as simple as a bumper breaks or a window regulator fails or something like that, often people find themselves failing to repair them because they can't afford to because the car is worth almost nothing. So the car deteriorates and gets to a point where they just want to throw it away. Such is not the case with the Toyota Highlander. And the second one on the list is one that's actually a little more interesting, a little more fun. And we're talking about a Mazda Miata MX-5 or whatever you want to call it. From the original days, you can get engines from 1.6, 1.8 liter, and as well as two liter. There's Mazda Speed versions with superchargers as well. But the latest version is actually a two liter with a six speed manual gearbox or a five speed auto. Beautiful cars, they're fun quick 0 to 60 5.7 seconds in the latest version there's nothing slouchy about that that's plenty of sporting activity for a sunday afternoon drive or a rip through the mountains that's all you need but the beauty is these miatas or mx5s run almost literally forever and they have such a cult following that even if you decided you were bored of it somebody else wants it so it's easy to own it's cheap to operate and it's easy to sell if you decide eventually you want to get rid of it but they're great cars let's take a look as you can see, Miatas are always very minimalist. Simple little manually operated ragtop roof, simple little handles, you know, a simple mirror, nothing too complex, but it's works and it's stylish. Then you have all these nice little flares and humps and bumps, and Miatas have always had a lot of that styling. They've definitely followed the styling cues from the rest of the brand. Often the RX-7s or RX-8s, you often see that styling trickling into these body styles as well. Clearly you have aluminum wheels, great nice little touches there. So realistically you can actually have some fun, enjoy the reliability and the long life of a Mazda Miata or MX-5 and not feel guilty. And the third car that is a great one on the list, absolutely will run forever. As a matter of fact, they're so great, they have such an amazing reputation. I've personally been shopping for one to maybe backfill for one of my kids to drive. And we're talking about the Toyota Camry parked right back here. Beautiful, nicely styled and well performing. But let's take a look. So here we have the newer style version of grills we see in the Camrys and the Toyotas. Very similar to the Lexus, other than with these, they break them up with these bars, which is nice because Lexus has a grill that some people don't love. But there it is, Toyota, clearly not a hybrid. This is the gas jobby. And then you look at the headlights here, absolutely gorgeous. You've got projectors and you've got a mixture of other elements here. Some nice chrome touches in there. And as well, some fake vents, but just adds to the styling cues. Look at the hood absolutely gorgeous you've got all kinds of contours and lines makes it look powerful and the interiors are wonderful too they usually blend them with a nice mixture of fake synthetic type looking leather materials as well as some easy to clean materials the dashboard has a nice new conventional display you've got some great accent touches aluminum trims and bezels you've got some great well wearing buttons and some high quality plastics that feel great to the touch and another great mirror We've got an old school keyed entry there. Small handles, they're simple but effective. Then we look around here and we have this beautiful little wing on the back. Absolutely great for the sporting look. And look at these great little tail lights. We also have this wonderful little vent here. Gives a real sporting look. This is the SE model. So we're talking about typically a four cylinder engine. But look underneath, you've got two pipes there. This beautiful rear valence here as well. And no pipes here, but you would on certain V6 models. Also, you've got a nice set of aluminum wheels to make sure you don't feel like you're slumming it. And I have to add, you can get a couple different transmissions available. You can get either a CVT, which isn't really my favorite, or you can get an eight speed automatic depending on the configuration or the engine setup. And you can either get a V6 engine, three and a half liters, makes about 300 horsepower or 301 to be precise, or a two and a half liter four cylinder engine that makes it around 202 horse or about 206 horsepower depend. Some of them come with the variable valve timing, VVTI, as well as dual injection. So you're talking about port and direct injected to maximize the efficiency, the performance. These cars perform well for the size of engines. They're very capable. They are front wheel drive. So if you're looking for the high performance vehicle, not really your game, but they definitely deliver the goods on every other element and it will truly run forever. And the next one is one that, remember, life's too short to drive boring cars. So we really have to talk about not just longevity, but we wanna talk about cars that are actually equally fun to drive. Now we have two Hondas here. This is the next on our list. Here we have the venerable Honda Accord and it could easily make this list because they're peppy to drive, they're super reliable and they'll last a long time. But since we're talking about a little fun, a little spice to life, 
Let's talk about the Honda Civic Type R like we see right here. More of an egg colored style of white. More white white and here we have a little more flavor. There's a lot of great elements on here. I just don't know where to start. But this car easily makes a list of one of those cars if you look after it is going to last a long long time. And yes it's turbocharged. So for people that say don't buy turbocharged cars because BMW couldn't get it right. This still in fact could be a great option because it will last a long time. Tucked under the hood there, we have a two liter four cylinder engine and it's VTEC and it's turbocharged and it will make 306 horsepower. Also coupled to a front wheel drive and a six speed manual gearbox, this car is ridiculously fast. As a matter of fact, it's so fast on a racetrack, it makes some Ferraris and some Lamborghinis look absolutely silly. Torque steer is kind of intense, but it's a lot of fun. Let's take a quick look around at one of the greatest cars on the list for reliability, longevity, and for fun. So right here, we have these awesome headlights. I love that design. And they're all surrounded by this wonderful piano gloss black finishing here and this texturing. Here we have the red symbol for R and we have the red Honda telling you it's got a little more spice built in. Here we have a beautiful carbon fiber front spoiler. Be careful for curbs, that can ruin real quick and easy. But as we circle around, we see we've also got some great piano gloss black here with a set of little fog lights punched in there. Lots of vents, lots of more accents, lots of aggression dialed into this car. And as you look over here, we transfer over, we'll notice we have a flared out fender here, absolutely strong looking. And to top it all off, we have this wonderful hood. You'll notice a hood scoop to allow for extra breathing. As we move along, we have these beautiful rims, literally some of the nicest wheels I've ever seen on a Honda. And behind them, we'll notice we have this beautiful set of Brembo brakes. Any car with Brembo brakes usually suggests that it has a very sporting intention. Now we're talking about 20 inch wheels, so clearly this is a hot rod. Oh, and right here we have this great little accent here and of course they had to finish off the flare somehow so they incorporated this nice little vent and accent here beautiful mirrors finished off nicely you've got your sensors and cameras built in there and look at the rocker panel very pronounced very aggressive and i love the concave design of the door panel and the overall design all the way along again the carbon fiber comes right up and just accentuates the rear flare here beautiful finish and again a wonderful set of 20 inch rims and as well we have a basic set of handles pretty much in the spirit of a typical honda civic more high gloss trim finishing and did you know this car is so incredibly fast it actually logged a time of seven minutes and 43 seconds on the german made nurburgring and just to keep that in perspective some of the highest end supercars are cracking that down at around seven minute mark so clearly this this car has some serious gusto to it. And then we looking at the back here, we have all these other little tidbits that suggest that it is more of a sporting car. Some would suggest these cars are a little overdone and I would not disagree. I truly believe they went overboard. They did a little too much in terms of styling and actually overstyled the crap out of this car. However, it is very interesting. There's lots of very cool touches. For example, this high deck lid style wing here with the high gloss black and more high gloss black here, as well as again, VTEC Turbo tells you that that's the hot rod in the Civic Type R right there. Look at these rear tail lights. Hey, you get this wonderful little jelly bean look here. And of course, going down, we have more vents, fake of course, and more carbon fiber on the rear diffuser down here, accentuated by a set of dual fart pipes that are popping out the bottom right there. And so all the performance and exterior bling wouldn't be the same if it wasn't matched up with what's going on inside of the car. And there's lots of red accents throughout, which would suggest the more sporting intention. If lolling through slow traffic and lollygagging and driving at 1500 RPM is your game, this probably is in it. However, when you want the sporting experience and you want to hit the freeway on ramp, this is your kid right here. And because it's a Honda, if you look after it, it's guaranteed to run a many, many hundreds of thousands of miles. Beautiful car, interior, exterior, slightly overdone, but this is a great car and a great game if fun and longevity are your priorities. So the next one on my list is one I've spoken about before. I've actually done reviews on it. And we're talking about the Toyota 4Runner. And that's number five because this vehicle is not like your conventional SUVs like we're seeing on a lot of other SUVs created in the marketplace today that are built on more or less a unibody or minivan type chassis. We're talking about body on frame, literally not necessarily the quietest and most refined chassis, but certainly one of the most long lived type chassis. It's essentially built on a truck. So it's going to last a long time. The vehicle's not gonna get all loose and flexy and all of that goodness, but it's a great vehicle and it's going to last longer than you even want it. As a matter of fact, I have a brother-in-law that owned two of them. One, he just got so tired of it because it rusted and that was from many years ago, but it had hundreds of thousands of miles on it and he just let it go. The second one, same thing. 
it developed a little bit of a rust problem because here in the rust belt up in here in Alberta, you often have those kind of problems. However, the miles were way up there. And so these vehicles are guaranteed to last the test of time. But let's take a quick look around. So looking up here, the latest, we've got a 2020 model here and you've got, you've got projector headlamps there. Pretty simple style, but again, like Toyota, they're creating these very boxy lights, both front and back. And you'll see this nice, very rugged design, cutesy wootsy looking little fog lights. And we go along the front, you've got the big bars along the front, makes it look very truck-like. There's no question it looks utilitarian and looks like a truck. Here we've got this great little intake look here, more design than actual function. And then we look along the side, of course, this is a dressier model. We're talking about a TRD. And we've got some nice color molded matching, matching rocker guards here. And look at these beautiful wheels. Again, as I say, TRD style, great aluminum. You don't have to slum it, they look great. And then along the side, you've got this very robust step guard right there. You can step on all day long. It's gonna take the beats. Here, pretty simple handle by Toyota. You're gonna to get high gloss black, but it looks great and it's functional. Same story here. And as I mentioned before, we're talking about the TRD off-road edition. Circling around the back, we have some other great elements back here. And again, as I mentioned, you know, what we're seeing with a lot of these Toyota products, including some of their smaller SUVs, are the boxier taillights. Here it's smaller, not quite as pronounced as what you find in the Highlander, but still you get that boxy look, very clean and effective. Here, great plastic to protect all that garbage that you might haul in and out. And you can actually tow some crap because this is a true SUV. Again, as I said, body on frame. Here, nice little upgrade here with the piano gloss black here and very vertical. So again, it's more utilitarian based. Nice little overhang. Again, more high gloss black features along the top. I love that. Personally, I'm in love with the high gloss. More difficult to maintain, but it looks sharp. All right, and we circle around. And as we look up here, this one's equipped with this luggage rack here. Clearly, it's meant to haul a lot of junk around. Maybe you want to take a trip, go off-roading. This vehicle is certainly more than capable. Personally, though, if you look at the tires on this vehicle, this looks more like a highway-rated tire, not so much meant for the off-road, but that's a pretty easy retrofit. Then we look around here, and the interior is great. It's built with high-quality materials, and even though it looks very basic because there's lots of hard-wearing plastics, the buttons and knobs are very large, but they're easy to engage. They don't break, they don't wear out, they just work and they'll work for 500,000 miles. There's not a lot of high fancy soft touch film in here, but again, it's going to last the test of time. Now this vehicle actually is not a luxury vehicle, although it's higher spec and I'll show you. This one here, of course, is equipped with a sunroof, which is going to allow lighting into the cabin for those passengers who just like a little extra luxury feel. And so what do you have equipped? Well, we have a torsion differential, which allows a, a transfer of torque to the front wheels, but essentially it's all wheel drive, four wheel drive, or rear wheel drive. These are great vehicles, they're robust, and they're versatile. This one has the four liter V6, makes about 270 horsepower, and they're built like a tank. They don't have huge horsepower, and quite frankly, when you're driving down the road, they feel a little wallowy. The front end has a little bit of an extra feel and soft feel to it. It's certainly not a sporting driving experience, but I'll tell you this much, when you want a vehicle to just show up every day, good weather, bad weather, a little off-roading duty, haul the kids around, do a little back road driving, this is your vehicle, and it'll do it for 500,000 miles. These will run forever. So even with that sloppy driving feel on the street, when you go off-road, this is exactly the kind of steering wheel you want to have in your hands. And with all of that said, I'm sure you loved it. Hope it helped, but maybe you thought, hey, it's time to step up to a luxury vehicle instead. Well, guess what? Right there, there's a list of five amazing luxury cars that will guarantee to last forever. Hope you enjoy it, check it out, drop a line, and please, above all, do subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then, bye-bye.